Brisbane bounced out in straight sets as the Giants set up a date with Collingwood thanks to a controversial finish. And the Cats prepare to tackle the Tigers without their spearhead forward. This is the round so far presented by KO. And Kane Corns, we go straight to the Gabba tonight. A gripping last quarter. The Giants hold on. They book their third preliminary final in four years. No, that's what finals footy is all about. One of the games of the year. And the, the finish to this, there's Daniels kicking the goal late. What a moment of individual brilliance from the smallest man on the field. And that was it. Got should have been a goal. the prelim final. Let's have a look at this. No, it shouldn't have been. That's a clear throw from Reid there. Umpire blindsided. And the umpires had far too much of a say tonight, as it was on proceedings. 53 free kicks on the night is too many. But they had their opportunities, the Lions. And it was these guys that thought Haynes and Davis, eight intercept marks the Giants took in the last quarter, were too good. But as I said, the Lions had their opportunity. And credit to that man, Leon Cameron, for his coaching performance. Because I'd all but, but written them off this year at stages. The Giants had won four out of their last nine leading into the finals. And they've won two big finals playing the way finals should be should be won. So he needs a lot of credit and his record now in finals is as good as any current coach. The Lions first crack at September in 10 years and they're straight out. This is their last quarter stats. They dominated most of the proceedings of this final term. They even had 70% of the play in their front half, but they couldn't convert. Yeah, amazing. If you saw those stats at three-quarter time, you think, well, how much do the Lions win by? I mean, they had so many opportunities, probably wasteful going forward at times, rush of blood, and that happens with inexperienced sides. They just needed a bit more composure entering inside 50, but they were so dominant around the contested situations, the clearances. Martin was brilliant in ruck, but... In the end, it was the steady heads of Davis and Haynes back there who were able to steady the ship and hold on for, for a thrilling finish. Opening quarter had a lot of action, physicality everywhere from the Giants. But this happened when the game wasn't even two minutes old. Charlie Cameron, so much riding on his performance and his elbow, a massive whack in this incident. Yeah, sickening really, wasn't it? And just one of the toughest and most courageous performances I've seen from any player this year. When, when I saw that, I thought, well, broken arm or ruptured elbow tendered, I wasn't sure, but this is only moments later. He comes back on the ground, straight away gets involved, takes this contested mark inside 50. You can see the grimace on his face will show that. He was in so much discomfort and pain. Got up, went back, took his kick and slotted it. He kicked two for the night. Wasn't his biggest game for the All-Australian, but for him to have any sort of influence on this game after that incident was, was extraordinary courage. And unfortunately for him, as he wakes up pretty sore tomorrow, he won't be preparing to play in a prelim final. He might even need some surgery as the scans come back. The Giants targeted that injury. This is pretty interesting from Sean Ryan, the umpire, jumping in. The game, OK? If he continually knock his arm and I will pay a free kick. Now, you've been warned, OK? I've told you. If he's continually knocking his arm. We thought there might have been a bit in this and should, there, should the umpire have the ability to call the free kick, but going to the rule book, uh, well, umpire as well than his rights to do that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't Who like it. It's not? finals footy. He's on the field. He's By being on the field, he's declared himself fit. Now, nothing that Kennedy did there was anything untoward. You are allowed to annoy and niggle your direct opponent when they're out there. But this rule says make unreasonable or unnecessary contact with an injured opposition he's not player. Injured. He's not injured. If, if he was down on his haunches and Kennedy came across and him over while he was getting treatment from a trainer. He's not injured. He's back on the ground. He's strapped up. He's in the field of play. He's not injured, in my eyes, in that instance. But Adam Kennedy's not targeting his elbow over nothing. He wasn't he targeting. Knows. He was just sort he was of slapping his no, elbow. He was just sort of grabbing him and getting in position, as all good defenders do. Nothing untoward. Stay out of it, umpires. I had far too much to say tonight. Paid too many free kicks. They were too involved. And I'll be very interested to see how many of those three tonight will get a gig next week. All right. Toby Green, last week stood after the tribunal and said that he was extremely apologetic for serious misconduct against Marcus Bontempelli. I don't know what he's doing in the bottom of this pack. He's jumped in third man and he didn't need to be here. His left arm gets involved on the top of Lockie Neal, as we're about to see. And then Kane, as the next angle we'll see, his right hand makes contact with the face of Lockie Neal. I can't believe he's doing this five days after copying a $7,500 fine for something similar against Marcus yeah, Bontempelli. Once again, it's a non-story. If it's not Toby Green, we're not even talking about it. He's done nothing untoward there. Uh, and I'm not sure what you're insinuating or what you want. He's, what, what, he's playing next what, week. What do you want to happen with that? So why are we talking about it? They're definitely going to... Michael Christian will be looking at that tonight. But in you the just arc. said he's playing next week. He's playing next week, but if a $7,500 fine last week for serious misconduct. I'm sure they're going to be looking at that. They'll look at, they'll, they'll look at 30 incidents from tonight. It is a non-issue. And once again, the way that Toby Green gets assassinated from sections of the supporters and the media is comical. 7,500 did last week was extreme in any measure. And it was far too big a talking point for what he actually did. That one there, you're allowed to rest 
your arm, your forearm on your opponent's back. There's nothing in it. Move on. Let's stop talking about it. And if he even gets a fine for that, it's an absolute joke. And no other player, bar Toby Green, would even be talking about that. Oh, I'm just he, he said after the game, he goes, I'll have to see what they, they think about it. So he's well aware. Well, he, can't say, he can't say anything else. No, but it, you know, I just can't believe he's put himself in that situation five days after the same thing happened. Anyway, we'll get on to more. Just on the Giants, Canelio potentially comes back next week. Green, he'll have a lot to prove after that uh, semi-final last year against Broden Maynard. Yeah, we'll get him again. He'll go straight to him. I mean, yeah. the great matchups ever. I actually think we're going to get a better game next week as a result of the Giants winning, just yeah. because of the star factor that the Giants have. Cameron's playing some good footy. Toby Green, probably best on ground again. So, I mean... Collingwood would have been loving that performance because of how brutal it was. They would have just loved seeing the teams guide it like they did. So they're sitting nicely and you think they're clearly in the box seat. But we should get a pretty good game next week. All right, the Cats and the Eagles. The Cats brought the heat back on Friday night. They didn't want to be blown off the park again in a first quarter. Chris Scott was fired up before the game. Yeah, and we should pay him credit as well because he was... Oh, he was uh, <laughs> everyone went after him last week yep. is what I'm trying to say for the omission of his Ruckman last week and Blitzarves into the Ruck. So this was just sensational. Once again, he wound them up and he got a response. Their tackling and their pressure and their ability to make the Eagles look all at sea. McGovern took one intercept mark on the night. They were able to isolate their matchups inside 50. It's this sort of stuff here. I mean, the ground ball battle and the way that they won ground balls on the night was extraordinary. So the numbers there, ground balls plus 37 for Geelong. That's finals footy at its best. And... I know West Coast came back and hit the lead at one point, but Geelong just dominated and controlled the game, and we should pay credit for their performance and Chris Scott for the way that he got his boys up. Tom Atkins, four tackles in the first 20 minutes. When the Eagles won the flag last year, he was still Geelong's VFL captain. Hadn't been drafted at that stage. He set the tone. At the same time, the Eagles didn't come to play when it came to the physicality. These guys, 11 of their 22 laid just one tackle. Yeah, and if you saw those numbers in a pre-season JLT game, you'd be critical. I think they laid 43 tackles as a side on the night. Geelong absolutely beat them up. They plus 14 in tackles. This is a finals game, cutthroat on the MCG, and those players what, laid one tackle each, 11 of them. Um, not good enough, not physical enough, and perhaps they just walked in on the back of a pretty soft kill against Essendon the week before and thought it was going to happen, but... Geelong, uh, in the end, just, just far too tough and, and they deserve the win. You reckon there was pressure on the coach, there was pressure on the skipper. 18 touches last week. I know you were strong here on this program asking what to define his role and whether he's a wingman or an inside mid. He went straight into the guts and was pretty inspirational. Yeah, it's just a lesson for them. P play your players to their strength. Don't try and play them in an area that is not their strength. Joel Selwood, from the minute he's walked in the Geelong corridors. He's been a ball hunter, a ball magnet. He wins contested possessions. He lifts his team in the big moments. To do that, he's got to be around the ball. He's not a wingman for me. He's had no impact when playing on the wing this year. So good coaching. Blixar have spent some time on the wing. Selwood went inside and you get that result. And it's a best on ground performance from, from the skipper who's always been inspirational. And I said last week, he's the player I admire most in the comp. Blixar's on the wing question without notice. Do you push him back and play on Lynch or Rewalt? Do you keep him there? I just think you push him back. I, yeah. I, I thought he was well beaten by Andrew Gaff on the wing. Um, so he's going to come up against someone like Whitfield, someone who knows what they're doing yeah. on the wing. So push him back where he's, he's played his best footy this year. This one with Tommy Hawkins. We're going to see this quite a bit over the next 48 hours. He's been given a one-week offer. Intentional, high contact, low impact. The Cats have to challenge. They're going to cough up the $10,000 to take this to the tribunal. You would expect on Monday. Any chance of getting off? No, I don't think so. I think one week is right. But you, you ask what Toby Green is doing, and you're really strong on that. Oh, yeah. We, we, oh. Should, we should be going so hard on Tom Hawkins for this because yeah. if I'm Patrick Dangerfield, who has never played in a grand final, who's been in four prelim finals, and you've got your most important player, arguably, with yourself, swinging his arm to your opponent's head behind play and costing yourself a week, they can't win without Hawkins. Yeah. They, they don't win. Hawkins doesn't play. Geelong lose. And Dangerfield misses out on another grand final. He'd be filthy with his teammate at that. It's a, a pretty ordinary act. That's four brain phase for Tom Hawkins. He's, he's jump a punch on uh, Dane Rampey. Similar on Phil Davis. The umpire incident, we can't forget that. And that's in a semi-final in the heat of the moment. I don't it's know four why, massive brain yeah, phase. I don't know why he keeps having it because he just seems like an absolute ripper. I've had nothing to do with Tom, but every time he speaks, you think, wow, what, what an impressive human, what an impressive player. His performance, it, it was the match winner with four goals. He made McGovern look silly at times. One, one-on-one. -on -one, so... Yeah. He won't be there and um, unless there's something extraordinary that happens at the tribunal and Geelong can't win without him. This received plenty of action on social media. Mal Horsey, take us through it. 
Yes, Twitter was a light, boys, in a shock to no one. Uh, plenty of strong opinions on this one. It was the biggest talking point after the match. Uh, it kind of felt like the more the incident was shown, the more people were keen to see Tom Hawkins rubbed out for next week's prelim. And as I said, plenty of strong opinions, including former Pies player Adam Oxley. He said, will the MRP have the credibility or are dog shot punches fair play? So he's not leaving much up to the imagination there. Now, after the MRO's decision was handed down today. Um, fans were kind of split. Lots of people were feeling like one week was an appropriate punishment, but people were also pretty quick to compare the incident and subsequent suspension to Toby Green's one last week. Uh, Tom Hawkins should have just clawed at Will Schofield's eyes was one take. Boys, now, this was a real theme across social media this afternoon. I actually can't iterate this enough. It was kind of every post or every tweet about this Tom Hawkins incident was followed with a string about Toby Green. So, Kane, kind of like you mentioned before, fans, media, everyone are obsessed with Toby Green doing this sort of stuff. Mm. And people were just, I think, a bit dumbfounded. And I think it says more about the Toby Green incident and suspend, uh, lack of suspension and the fine rather than the Tom Hawkins one. But anyway, people comparing those a lot on social media. Now, before Michael Christian handed down uh, the punishment today, Patrick Dangerfield spoke about the incident with Tom Hawkins on 3AW. Boys, I want to show you this one. Danger said, uh, I think in recent weeks the AFL is moving away from suspensions. I agree with the AFL's approach. You want the best players out there playing, so I'd hope there's consistency in that. Now, a fair bit to unpack here, boys, because not only is he Tom Hawkins' teammate, but he's also the president of the AFL Players Association. So I'm keen to get your thoughts on this one because some pretty strong comments, Kane. Yeah, contradicted as well, of course. And he's not the only person in AFL circles to be in that position. He's asked about it. I mean, you've, you've, you've got to give an answer and you don't want boring media performers were critical of that. But in this instance, yeah, I would have thought his commentary would have been more, I'm disappointed in, in my teammates' actions more so than trying to defend him. Yes, you want the best players out there if they deserve to be. And Hawkins this week doesn't deserve to be. Well, he'll be watching the game on KO, potentially. KO lets you instantly stream over 50 sports, including every match of every uh, all the AFL final series. You can catch up on any of the matches you missed on the KO Hub. With all this weekend's matches, classics and more available on demand, ready to be watched at a time that suits you. Plus, you can enjoy all the action from those 50 sports, including the live coverage of the FIBA Basketball World Cup final. Spain and Argentina. Looking forward to that. Mm, the Aussies, um, heartbreaking. It was. They're in a bronze medal match. Now, to those games for next week, the preliminary final time has been set for Collingwood up against the Giants. We've got another twilight match. Yeah, twilight match. Uh, maybe a, a precursor for maybe a twilight grand final in the future, but that will be an absolute ripper if the Giants win. They can get out that Saturday night. A couple of great ones, and, and prelim final weekend is probably the best weekend on the AFL calendar. Could be 97,000 at the G for that Friday night game. Now, for one more thing, this week, we spoke about Joel Selwood. He was everywhere, refused to come off a couple of times with the blood rule. This was interesting, Kane, from our behind the goals. He comes off the bench and just rips the towel off the West Coast Very trainer. Very cheeky from Joel and the West Coast trainer gave him. But uh, Jared Redden saying, no, nah, I'm not having any of that. Don't get your blood on West Coast Eagles' towel. So Joel just walked off. He was bleeding all night. Every time the camera was on him, Joel Selwood was bleeding and, and pretty symbolic of his career. He's, he's been an absolute warrior. Start next week with a head bandage. You might as well. Thanks, Kane. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks, Mel Horsey. We'll see you same time, Thanks, same boys. place for our last show on the round so far.